Hey guys, welcome back to the Ask Muse podcast, brought to you by Yellow Music. Back home uh, with a newfound friend that I'm very excited to be sitting down with uh, today. I've got Cal and Mike, I've got Geordie on, on the other side of the uh, other side of the room, and essentially, uh, I'm, I'm excited to learn more about Cal and Mike, more about you, mate. So, kick us off, give us a bit of an intro, and, and say g'day. Uh, g'day. Uh, I'm Callan Mai. Well, I'm actually Geordie. Callan Mai is like a pseudonym, um, and now it's a, I guess, a band name. For a long time, though, it was just uh, me yep. and my sad guitar, and <laughs> now it's a three-piece band. So I'm still trying to figure out whether I should say I'm Callan Mai. I don't really know. I just say yes, and a lot of people do think I'm called Callan or Cow, and so I just accept that. Yeah, well, I, I like. I, I was going to start here. Uh, you've got a recent video that you put up. That is you interviewing yourself about that exact thing. It's like, hey, Cal, how are you going? And you're like, uh-huh. oh, that's not my name. Yes. There's that. I'd like to go into that. And, and for those that don't know, I found out from from recent show we played together the meaning behind it. But um, to, to skip ahead a bit from there, what is the relationship for you between content and art? You have been killing it with, with you, the way you do orchestrate your own image as a band as a you gig promotion everything we always comment on that and as someone when i was chatting with kind of the first time doing doing the the belly drum and the chamberlain stuff and the people you meet at gigs videos and all that stuff we really had a bit of a vibe of popping off with those videos for a while there and doing stuff with jet and stuff but now you're doing it for the gigs and all this stuff what is your sort of relationship with the whole content and art thing That's a good question. Um, I think that for a long time, like use of social media just made me want to kick myself in the balls. I absolutely (laughs) hate it. I hate, I still on some level deep down really fucking hate it and wish, uh, can I swear? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Cool. Fuck. Um, (laughs) no, uh, no, I think like, yeah, on some level, you wish you didn't have to. Yeah. I do reject it kind of as an idea almost entirely, but I know that I have to use it. It's just the world that we live in. And so I think for a long time I was experimenting, trying to figure out how to use it. And for a lot, I tried to be like really cool and tried to look cool and say deep things. And that just made me feel like an idiot. Um, and then it wasn't until I was started working with Dicko, who I'm, who I'm no longer working with now, but I was for a, a period of time. And he kind of said to me, this is, uh, it stuck with me. He said, this is your channel. Like it can be anything you want it to be. Like it can be whatever it is, let it be a real reflection of you. And I think back then I started making a couple of funny videos and it was terrifying to post them because when you make something funny, it's like you're in some ways you're, you're really putting yourself out there probably even more than Uh, you are with music because with with music even if you play a song badly people will kind of give you a tepid round of applause but if you get up and try to stand up and try to make people laugh and if you and if you don't make them laugh you will fucking know about it immediately and they will let you know about it like people will people will tell you to get off like if you do that for long enough so um yeah so when i started posting out there it was very scary but i did get i just noticed i I would get so much more of a response than if i posted a video of me playing a song or something like that and um and then slowly i think i took all of last year off music so i wasn't posting at all and now that i'm back i have just made up my mind that i if it if i think of something and i start laughing then i'm gonna post it and that's as much thought as i put into it now i'll drive along in the car and i'll do the back and forth out loud and then I go, okay, when I get home, I'll record that. And now the difficult thing, I think, is just trying to not spend too much time on it because some of these videos take me like two hours because I'm still working out how to use the the programs and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. I, I get that. I like that because I, I, when you said I just, if I like the idea, if it razzes me with a chuckle, then it's going live. Yeah. That's predominantly how a lot of the videos I've done with Jet and Chamberlain with the people you meet at gigs, like, well, like one of the other ones, we did uh, people meet at gigs part whatever it was and it was like um the guy wants to have a go on your stuff and yeah. i'm at a chamberlain rehearsal <laughs> and i was like you know what would be good is because we've got two drummers here um you just sort of hang out or whatever and, and i'll be playing and then when you can come up and sort of say uh, hey i i'd like to play or can my son have a go on your kit so kane brings him over oh can my son have a go on your kit um he's really good i was like okay and he's like 
he's five now. That has become a line that we've consistently <laughs> said with the way he's just like, um, no, he's pretty good. And I'm like, I don't really want to. He's five now. Like, <laughs> mate, he's fucking good, okay? Yeah. He's five. Yeah. And I'm just like, he's He's yeah. come a long way. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. And it's become, we struggled to hold it together whilst we did it, but it was just something came off the dome. I was like, oh, my God, I literally hate when people come up and say, hey, can I fucking have a yeah. gay stuff? Yeah, 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 of course. No, mm-hmm. no, please. Um, but we just turned into something and that they just came off the dome. And I think that's where that authenticity of who you are mm. and how you portray yourself. And as Dicko said, that idea of having your own channel, there's no rules to it other no. than an unwritten rule that you need to be yourself. That's and you exactly need to have right. that authenticity. Because and there's nothing more authentic than laughter because you don't have a choice about you what you really laugh at. You don't really have control. No. And there's no negative byproducts to laughter. And the no. other thing that comes from that is, like you said, with your, your stand-up comedy routine, you're riffing it up on stage and you suck, you're bombing. That's an objective truth. There's no, oh, look, I know no one laughed, but I still think that it was pretty good. No, yeah. it wasn't. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't. definitely it wasn't. It was not yes. good. Music's a bit more open in that way. Like Especially someone can get the up there and... Well, that's true, but someone can also just get up there and like scream at their guitar, and someone might think that's good music. Like well, that's you know the what thing, I mean? and you actually almost get shunned if you go, "That was fucked." Oh, no, 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 no. Have you not heard that? That's a different style of. Of course, that's it's right. A different style, but like because you think about the stories. Essentially, you're reiterating stories, regurgitating stories to put in the form of stand-up comedy, mm-hmm. and then you regurgitate a different story that's about an experience you had and stuff. And people may not understand the story, hear the lyrics because of the mix or whatever. Yep. And they go, yeah, but I love what you did with the guitar. That was a bit of fun. Yeah, 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 that's Whereas right. if you don't <laughs> relate to the story, you don't get behind the thing. I was listening to a podcast uh, just, just before, just um, on the way home today, and he was saying, uh, I did this whole thing where I was I was doing a bit about being a bit anxious, a bit vulnerable, a bit of self-deprecation material. And some guy, you know, he hurls out at me in the crowd like some heckler. And he's like, so it's hard for me because I want to come back and say – fuck off you stupid prick yeah but i can't do that and then go back into a bit about me being all sad and anxious because it seems like yeah it'll break the spray it'll him. break like, the spell sure? yeah fine, man. I, yeah you just sprayed that bloke for 10 minutes straight that's right whereas so having that authenticity is key yes it is and i think that maybe one thing i was probably afraid of is how can i still be make serious music if I'm making stupid shit online. And uh, I think I what I've come to understand, and that's probably also because of putting the band together and um, and writing with other people and collaborating, is that I realise actually that my songs, even the sad ones, are often pretty funny and they've often got turns of phrase in them and kind of a bittersweet sort of thing where I think, well, maybe it's better to laugh than cry. Like, it's easier to laugh than cry. And so I kind of realised that my songs had that. And in some ways it is, it's like me working out, I guess, what sort of musician and songwriter I, I am. And ultimately it's a storyteller. And if people laugh, that's a that's a good story. Exactly. Because a story elicits lots of emotions. And the, exactly. the, the best of the stories have you itching onto every second word because you just felt really despondent and then suddenly you're making me laugh again yes. and you can yeah. pick and choose. Being able to pick and choose and do that in a three-minute song. Yes. That, that, mean, that's a that's superpower. And I think that's, like, I'm sure Dylan has mentioned that to you, um, who's, who's playing drums for you. When we do Sally and Space Gigs, it, there's very much that vibe of, like before we, when we were still in the suits, um, the novelty act, you know, the space wiggles are coming out. Yeah. And then we come out and play some serious tunes and we play, you know, Bad Company about being miserable when you're by yourself, but it's a bop, so everyone's yes. getting around it. Yes. The rules are, are so non-existent because that, that's you, you set it up for yourself, which is what music is all about. Yeah, and I think that they're even less existent now because of how everything works. You know, you can be a... You've, I, there's this guy, Petey. Have you ever seen his music? Mm, he's sure. a So he's like an internet, I guess, personality. I don't know which came first, whether it was the music and then whatever it is, he's like insanely huge on TikTok and mm-hmm. he makes these funny videos. Very similar, I guess, to like what I'm doing, obviously, mm-hmm. but with a way bigger audience. Um, and I'm pretty sure that he was doing that first and his music, which he clearly loves and cares about so deeply, is like a secondary thing that the people who really like him go and listen to the music and then he's got a whole, you know, fandom who are following him and seeing him live and it's like there are just there is no rules about how to do this anymore. Like we, I think when you grow up 
when we did, maybe you probably still have this idea in your head of what it's meant, what it means to be a musician, watching the musicians that we grew up looking at and that stuff's over. Like yeah. that whole system doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, so, like Tom Cardi and stuff like that. Yeah, like, exactly. That, that whole idea exactly. of I, I often spin the tracks that he's put together because they're very well constructed, funny stories, entertaining, yeah. great musically. Yeah. But then it's a lot of people don't know that he is accomplished in every single instrument that's in all of his videos. He yeah. can play all of them at an exemplary level. Yes. They just go, ha, funny man. Yeah, that's right. And Which then, is fine. Which yes, is fine. Yes, because for sure. If that's how you found out about you, what found out about me, or well, you can enjoy it at a whole range of different levels. That's the thing, and um, yeah, I think like Bo Burnham. Do you know mm-hmm. him? Yeah, like exactly. you know, he can have as many funny songs as he has. He can write a song like that funny feeling, which is in his Inside Special, which is like, fuck, it's heartbreak. It is so. It's like a, it feels like a song almost. I don't want to say. I don't want to be hyperbolic, but it's like the song of a generation. Yeah. Like he's singing about that feeling that you get when you think, fuck, is this gonna end? Like, look at where the planet, look at where we're, we're headed and look at how modernity makes you feel. He writes a song like that where you still laugh in certain lines, but it's a very, it's somber. a different, it's a yeah. somber laughter. Exactly. Um, that song wouldn't hit as hard, I don't believe, if he, if he, you weren't associating this man with the funny stuff that he creates. Like, it's actually, and that's kind of like a, another thing that I've thought about with my music. Like, for 10 years, I'd be playing solo alone with an acoustic guitar or electric guitar and a lot of sad, really sad songs. I'm, I mean, I'm proud of my music and I think I wrote good songs, but I don't think that you if you're hitting someone with that same emotion for the entire set then what what happens when you really want to make them understand something truly sad <laughs> like yeah. the baseline is through the floor exactly or if it's something that's always balls to the wall the baseline's in the ceiling that's right and so you need to make it you need to make those moments land and the only way you can do that is by having that variety so what i've lent into now which is i guess the same as what i'm putting online with content which is like joyous like i want people i want people when they watch it to have a feeling of i want them to have a particular kind of feeling which is something like joy that joy, like that abandon where you, you don't give a fuck. Mm. Like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter, you know, that feeling. I want to give people that feeling when they see it on stage. And then if I can come out and sing a song that is meant to be really hard hitting or something about, you know, a very sad time in my life, at least I can I can take that person there first so that when I say that, then I'll I'll have their attention yeah 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 it's like wow that that had some real impact yeah yeah absolutely Uh, what what is your um how have you sort of navigated or how are you navigating the transition into the band thing as as part of what you're trying to do there with with the impact how has that been for you i know that's been something that you've been very pleased about and you always talk about how keen you are to have um josiah and dylan with you yeah how how did that come to be and and what is the new vibe of, of Cal and Maya as the three piece. Yeah. Uh, it. so yeah, I think back in 2022 when I was working with Dicko, he was also working with Dylan Sailing from Space, Sailing yeah. Space and, um, he actually wasn't Dicko's idea, but I had come to find out that Dylan was a drummer and cause Dylan doesn't play drums in Sailing Space as you, as you're aware. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yes, 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 yes. I've seen that before. <laughs> um, and so I, yeah, I remember Dicko basically saying to me, look, you need a band, you need to start playing live. He said the, the industry in Australia does not exist for basically anything else in music than if you're playing live. Like you've got to get up on stage. Like I can't be putting your, pushing your song to Triple J and you don't have any shows booked. And at that time I was living in, we just spoken about it before, Aura, and I was just completely like out of the scene mm. and just not involved. And so... I and and also basically felt this is insurmountable. 
I don't know how to do this at this stage in my life. I don't know how I'm doing a master's. I'm studying like, you know, for my plan B, like, and I, I, I can't do it. And I met Dylan. And so Dylan was just immediately so positive And so I believe we can do this. Like we can do this. Like, yeah, we get in the room. So we did. And it was just the two of us. And I was just viewing it through such a negative lens. So luckily he had a lot of positivity. Mm -hmm. And then we tried out a bassist and a few other things. The bassist ended up leaving. And I, it was kind of like, I was like a stiff breeze away from quitting. Yeah, and it was that like, was like the last thing. That, look, guys, the universe has told me, no, you're yes. king, but the universe has told me it's up shit creek. Right. Yeah. And so I just had to, I was at a point where I had to pull away. I had to actually f- completely pull away from it. And I did. And so Dylan was really just said, no, that's fine. I understand. And I left. And then I had all of last year off music. And then that was so much worse. But it was really important to recognize that it was a realization that actually things are probably not going to happen the way that you have been telling yourself they're going to. You are probably not going to be very famous. You're probably not. It's, it's very statistically unlikely that you will. And the way that you've been living means that you definitely won't. If you continue your, like, li- uh, having the relationship to music that you do, then you definitely won't. Yeah. So that was, I had to like swallow that and accept it. And then slowly, as I started coming out of that year, I started slowly exposing myself to the Sunshine Coast Music Club, which is put on by Alex Henriksen, who's involved with Rainbow Valley Records. And I just made up my mind, I'm going to show up to that every time it's on. And I'm just going to sit there and listen to the people who are actually succeeding and as much as I want to run away from that and not hear it because I don't want to hear about cool people doing cool things that I'm not involved in, which is a ridiculous mentality but to it's have. But it's not rare. It's pretty yes, standard thing. It is, but it's a famine attitude. It's yeah. like that idea. You should, When you hear people say that, that should excite you because it should mean, wow, look, there's opportunities. Look what they've done. Like, look what they've done. And I'm I could sitting here and I get to listen. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I was exposing myself to that and – and then once uh, I got back, I went on a trip to Taiwan and I got back at the start of the year. And when I got back, I just knew I have to do this. I have to, I don't know what anything more than I have to just put a band together and try it. I need to see what it feels like to just get on stage. Like what if my only goal is eventually we get up on a stage and we play a song in front of some people. That's, that's as far ahead as I'll look at it. And, um, and I put that together. I, I, I contacted someone and asked him if he knew anyone on the sunny coast who played bass. And he told me about Josiah just I knew who I was because I've been going to the music club. And that's just one other way that you realize like, hey, by being out there, people know who you are. If you're sitting at home in your room, nobody knows who you are. No one puts a face to a name. It's harder to get people in a room. So uh, that was it. And then the three of us, the very first thing that happened was like I contacted Dylan and said, I've got Josiah. Like it was the first Dylan was hearing about it. I said, I want to go back in the room. And then we did, and that was in January. Mm. So, yeah, we've been doing it now for five months, I reckon. And, yeah, I've played like about, I guess, played three full live shows Mm -hmm. together. Yeah. That's awesome. And I love that that you got... You got a reinvigorated fire in the belly about about just giving it a shot. Like, if all I'm going to do is be in in it. Yes. All I'm going to do is turn up. I can, I'm 100% in control of this. I was having a conversation with someone um, who, for a di- completely different reason, had a long period of time off. And he said the same thing. He's like, um, I had to figure out what am I without music? Because yeah. his was less of a choice. It was more of a, yeah, just more of a out of his hands, but not in a bad way necessarily. But he's like, I had to figure out what was I without the drum kit? What was I without music? What was I without X, Y, Z? Yeah. And you've gone, okay, I either have to, live with what I am without music, which is looking a bit shit mm-hmm. um, because I really quite like it. Yes. Or I have to make peace with that. And you're like, well, I don't know if I want to make peace with that. So let's throw my hat around. Let's just be in it, have a go. And since you already had that connection and essentially the things that you're fully in control of is where you can physically go. You could go to those things. It existed. You knew about it. You went, you attended. Yeah. And you can control the 
sort of attitude or expectations of yourself. I, I think I'm going to give this a shot. I, I'm going to hit Dylan back up. I'm going to find out about this Josiah guy, you know. That's yeah. all within your control. And suddenly it's more freeing to be like, yeah, you know what? I can show up that time and I can message them and see if they're interested. Yeah, that's and then right. It's, it's freeing to be able to go, no, well, those things are in my control. What happens next? Well, that's right. And the thing is, they're small things, but they're really not. Like when I really look back and think of it, well, I'm an entirely, I'm in an entirely different place because of doing that. It's, it might not look like it that much on paper, maybe to other people looking from the outside, they won't see it. But I feel the difference of just, I remember I recorded my album in 2019 that I've been sitting on now for five years. And the guy who recorded that, um, Brian Deck, he said to me, my, the producer, um, he said, why are you trying to move to America? Which is what I was trying to do at that time. He said, like, why are you doing that? You, 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 you live in Australia. Your whole family's there. Why do you want to move over here? And I said, well, my manager's here. And he said, yeah, I get that, but don't, like, I'm not saying never move to America. But why do you want to move to start your career yeah. in America? And and he said, you should be, uh, you should be enthusiastically involving yourself in your local scene putting a band together, making T-shirts, trying to get played on Triple J, trying to sell tickets to shows. I just remember him saying that and I absolutely did not want to hear him, didn't want to hear it and I completely shut it down. But I, it came, these things, you know, in your life where you're not ready to hear them at the time but they come back up, you remember, if you're lucky, if you have enough insight. Um, and I think about that all the time, especially his word, enthusiastic. I just... That is such a difference. That is the, uh, and it's not easy. I, I believe being enthusiastic is a choice. You don't, it's it's actually hard work to remain yeah. enthusiastic. Enthusiasm is like, it's not a moderate feeling. No. It's not a moderate action. No. Um, like the bare minimum is showing up and then to be content, have some sort of contentment with I'm here and like it's fine. Like I don't mind hanging out with you. Yeah. To be enthusiastic. Yes. That's another level again. Well, so being enthusiastic brings other people into the fold. Like absolutely. If you can do that, you can change other people's mood. And I think for a long time, I was expecting, I was wanting to be put under other people's wing, and told what to do and where to go. And by having this band, like I recognize, like oh, it's actually on me. I need to. I need to hold this together and I need to make it worth their while to be involved in this. Mm. Like I need to, I need to tend to it like a friendship, like a relationship. These things require work. You can't just be passive about the whole thing. And it so, doesn't just coast along. No, no, it definitely doesn't. And I struck like I, I played like two shows last week with them Thursday and a Friday. I struggle immensely, and I think a lot of musicians do with what happens after that, with the that feeling of the the weekend's over. I've got to go to work. I've got other things that I've got to worry about, um, and that's where the enthusiasm is like a choice. Where you go, well, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do what I normally do, which would be to hide away and go, this isn't worth it. It's, I, it's not happening. How come I'm not playing? At Splendor in the Grass, not that it exists. I was going to say, how come I'm not playing Splendor in the Grass? Well, mate. <laughs> uh. But how come I'm not being given what I'm owed? You know, that ridiculous yeah. statement. Like, and if you're going to ask yourself that, then you should also say, well, how come I'm lucky enough to be born where I am with all the amazing things that I've been given? Like, you can't have it both ways. If you're going to say, why, am I, why do I not have these things? You have to recognize that there are other people who wish that they were you. Yeah, and then there's also the other element, which is more introspective. Why have I not got stuff that is open? Why why have I not got these opportunities that everyone else needs to have? And then you've got to look at it, which it is the same phrasing, but very different emphasis. Why do I not have the same things? Like rather than, oh, why do I not have it? Yeah. Actually, why? Let's quantifiably discuss why I don't have that. And then you'll find that the Venn diagram of problems that, um, are holding me back and problems that are the reason I'm holding you back is the same fucking circle. Yeah, yeah. It's... Because, like, there's things you're out of control. Why am I not getting opportunities to play Splinter on the Grass? Well, the big one is it is not. Yeah. But why am I actually, okay, well, there's, there's lots of things I could be doing. Am I doing as much as I could be doing for anything I Absolutely want to play? Absolutely not. Yeah. That's, that's just very no rarely is the answer yes. No. 
exactly. It's um yeah, and I think that for a, such a long time, I didn't ever understand that really the what actually matters beyond anything else is can you sell tickets? Can you will people spend their money that they may not have very much of to come and see you consistently? Mm. Will they do that? And I've never in the entire time that I've been a musician been a person who I could say yes to that question. I absolutely have not. Like, and I don't believe that that's because I don't have good enough songs. Uh, I think talent is like very far down the list of the things that really matter. <laughs> um, I mean, they matter to me. I care about that stuff, but I don't think they actually matter. And as we said before, music is all about taste anyway. Um, but I don't believe that that is because I don't write good songs. I believe that that is for, for many other reasons, but ma- mainly that I just have absolutely not done that work. I have not done. I've not done what's required. It really is, and it requires, yeah, enthusiasm and consistency, momentum, like all these things. Yeah, because I like that you used three words there that are very accurate, and none of them are hard work. Because hard work is a furphy. Hard work is is an umbrella term that mm. you can just throw at something. Oh, you've been yeah. working hard? Yeah. What the fuck does that look like? Yeah. Like, sometimes it's hard work to make sure that I get the edits really popping for this with all the different cameras and stuff. But if the conversation's rubbish, yes. which I find not hard work at all, this uh. is so enjoyable for my week. I'm always beaming when I come downstairs or I go to a Zoom call with someone after yep. the worst days always be me after I do a podcast. Yeah. But the hard work is the bit that just makes it look or sound fine. I got a degree downstairs that says I know how to make things sound all right. I'm not super worried about that. <laughs> but that's the hard work bit. Yeah. The for bit sure. that I find quite easy is the bit that actually counts. Did we have a good conversation? Yeah. Did people engage with what we had to say? And the same is true when you're doing music. If you produce poos that are not good to listen to or you don't have that enthusiasm, you don't have that consistency or that effort in putting momentum forward of your own because mm. momentum has to start with you well, yeah especially since you it is a pseudonym of your identity as a mm. musician mm-hmm. it is your momentum it's not just your as in the band's your it is your momentum and yeah. i've been in that way where i've done that many times and i've been the i'm never at the front runner but i've been the in the background front runner and you have to, yeah. You're you're the, the momentum guy, and that's mm-hmm. and that's cool. That that's cool because it gives you more control, more scope, more opportunity to try new things. And I see the way you do that, and it's fantastic. But um, you can feel a bit of a pressure and feel a bit of a weight, and that's totally fine too. That's right. And I think that the main thing to really remind myself of is if it feels like shit while you're doing all these things then ultimately, like, maybe you shouldn't do it. Like, if that was the biggest thing that I learned last year was I realized, like, well, this feels worse. So if I decide to turn around and start doing this again, if it feels like shit, then I'm just going to have to weigh that up against how did it feel when I did it, you know, when I wasn't doing it last year. And so then it does become that thing of, like, I know what's on the other side. I know what's involved. So I'm at a point now where... It's just, it's a choice. It's a choice that I'm going to enjoy myself. And probably more than all of that, I have completely accepted if the most that I ever do with this is get up at the precinct in Nambour and play live to my friends like I'm going to when we launch our single on July 26th. If that's the most that I get to do, that's absolutely fine by me. I'm, I, that doesn't mean that's all I want, of course, but I am okay with that idea because I know what, I know what the alternative is, would be that I just don't do it at all and that would be worse. And that's the thing. A lot of people, same as when it comes to when it comes to business, when it comes to career choices and stuff, the focus is always um, find what you want to do. And it's like, yes, finding what you want to do is there's lots of, there's 10 different ways, you could, 10 different paths you could go down. Yeah. Or you could go down two, know that anything similar to those two is garbage and you never want to go to it again. You've just trim down what is probably in your scope far, yeah. far quicker because you've gone, geez, I know that having time off, you've done the in- inverse of grass is greener. You know what it's like when it's a bit naff. Mm, so mm. you know, well, I'm going with the alternative. You, yeah. you, you lived it. You experienced it. You put the perspective in the upstairs paddock and you've gone, I don't want to go back to that again, basically. Upstairs paddock. Yeah. I like that. I haven't heard that term. Well, I was going to say, it wasn't <laughs> even related to the grass thing, but it sort of works <laughs> now that the, the grass is greener upstairs paddock. 
<laughs> uh, I always point in case some people go, what the fuck is this clown on about? <laughs> upstairs paddock. Yeah. Oh, I've got to get me one of those. Yeah, yeah, you got to get yourself. Gotta, yeah, you got to fill out the upstairs paddock. No, <laughs> no, no cattle required. Um, I want to I wanna go into America. You, you touched on it or you touch on it um, at live shows. How did that all sort of come to be? I know that's a, a big part of your life, big journey in your life, but how did that all sort of happen and mm. and now you're here and you're back home and obviously you didn't take the advice of old mate at the time you eventually did but not at the time yeah how did how did that all sort of unfold yeah it is a lot i'm trying to think of a quick way essentially i i signed to management in america with a with a woman who had heard my music um probably back in 2013 or 14 and then had sort of pursued me for a few years I was signed to other managers so she couldn't they and they refused to essentially give me up but she she had made she had told them that she wanted to sign me um and uh she eventually when that contract ended she took over and the whole proviso of, of this agreement was basically you are going to move to America like I can't do my job unless you're here. But meanwhile, I was living in Australia. So from about 2017, probably from 2018 when the contract actually went into, like, started, um, I was working in an office and uh, hating my life, like my day-to-day life. Um, And then I would have these little excursions of amazing experiences, like that existed for a few weeks to a month of a year, which were amazing, and then I'd have to go back to that life again. So I'd go over and did like South by Southwest and um, I did you know, like recording in like Los Angeles and things like that and then had the – like played in New York. I mean, I'm not playing to lots of people because I didn't have fans um, and then because I didn't cultivate anything to have that, uh, I just I, – I had talent and I had a person over there who had connections mm. – Um, And then that ultimately ended up with her um, fronting like the money for me to record an album with this guy, Brian Deck in Chicago, which I did in 2019. Um, So my relationship to America was like for years, it was just this um, like, what's the word on hold, like foreclosed. It was like, I'm waiting uh, Connor, um, Colin Hay, the singer of men at work. He has a song called waiting for my real life to begin. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly like that song is yeah, exactly like a beautiful lust of yeah. yeah. It's, I know it's there. It's right there, but also none of what I have right here is worth anything. This is shit. Yeah, yeah. And also, Which you is, would have no idea. It's it's like a real Clark Kent Superman scenario. It's like oh, you would have no idea what what I am who, who to what's I going am. on exactly. six weeks out of it. I'd be you know, walking. I'd be walking through the office, and I'd have this like just this feeling of like feeling simultaneously like a piece of dirt and then also like better than everybody and such a like i mean i hate i hate even thinking that i used to i mean i still have to fight these feelings this is not like completely gone but i just know so much better now and i've i've also had enough like rude doses of reality to like (laughs) to make me aware that, that that's not true um but yeah, so that's what America was to me. And, and ultimately, I think I just had this thing of like Australia. I have no interest in Australian music. I don't listen to Triple J. I don't, I'm not, I'm not involved. I'm not even in the scene. I wasn't even playing music on the Gold Coast. Like I literally was not even playing live. Like I was living at my dad's house. No, I'm not playing. Like I'm, I'm not engaged at no, all. No, I, my life is over there. And once I get over there and once everyone sees, then everything's going to happen. Um, and so then I, I had the album and I got back and then my manager was trying to get me um, like the visa that they have in the US and you have to prove this is actually the actual terminology. You're an artist of extraordinary talent. This is like the – and you have to be able to prove it to them. Like, look, you need me in your country because I have so much talent that I can only be a good thing for you guys to have for your economy basically. And it's – Uh, And this is like something that people at way, like way beyond where I was have to apply for and sometimes get turned down for. So my manager was starting to realize, oh, I don't think you're just going to be able to come over here. So then I remember her saying to me, 
look, maybe maybe we do need to pitch this to Australian labels. And I was like, no. Like, I was like, no, that's not going to happen. I'm an economic happen. figurehead. Yes. Like, tell the people. <laughs> Just tell them. An economic figurehead and megastar, <laughs> Callan Mai. And I was thinking, did they listen to the album? Like, the album's that good. Like, just get them to listen to it. And, yeah. And so then we're in the process of all of that um, And in 2020. And then I actually was speaking to Brian and – he was the guy who made my album and he ended up saying to me, cause I think he was starting to realize like, Oh wow, this guy's like not going to be budged from this idea. And I think he really, he was so encouraging and he believed in me so much. He really did. He, he was amazing. And he, he said to me, well, how about you come over to Chicago for six months and you can do basically like work experience, like in my studio, you can be here, you can be a session guy for, when the counting crows come through and whoever else like is passing through his his studio um and you can just you know and you can just i uh, basically put all your chips on this 6 months and see what you know happened. and i had all this money saved so that's what i was going to do and then covid happened about 1 month after that so were you here at that point or I you was were on over the, there? i was on the gold coast oh no still. no but so you were on the gold coast about yeah, to go about over there about to go yeah sure, right and then yeah my um and my dad, I was living with my dad and yeah, COVID, COVID hit. And suddenly I had, I had nothing. I had no belongings aside from like a guitar. Cause I didn't buy anything. Cause I was like, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm, I'm leaving. And so suddenly that happened. And then next thing I was like, so now who am I? I work in an office. I own an acoustic guitar. I have absolutely no following. I've got like, I have a tiny little bit of, I have some streams on Spotify, but pretty much I've got like nothing really like I'm start I'm going to have to start again and so I spent a bunch of money on home recording equipment because I'd never believed in myself enough to be able to do that and then that was a big change the second I started doing that there was a realization there like oh I can do this thing that I don't think didn't think I could do um and up until then it was a lot of people telling me how to make music or me asking them what what should I do now and this was the first time where I was having to make decisions which is still something that I struggle with um and then once lockdown ended I went to high school up here on the sunny coast and I just was like I need to get out of the gold coast I need to get out of my dad's house so I moved up here and um kind of crash landed here <laughs> and then immediately had that kind of cocky attitude of thinking that I was you know the the best thing since sliced bread uh I brought that with me uh and that very quickly I started watching as I started like jumping up at the open market at soul bar watching people who were just coming up brand new who were then putting together bands and beginning to play. And, and a few years later, they're getting better and better shows and they're getting there. And, and I was not doing that because I just had this like whatever failure to launch. Just like when I think about that, I think I didn't actually want it. What I wanted was a fantasy. I wanted the end part. And I didn't even know if I wanted that because who know I don't even know what that looks so like. I can say you didn't actually know what that looked like. You yeah. knew what you thought it looked like. Yes. Too many steps of exactly, there. exactly. But the the want the I didn't actually want to be a musician because the part of being a musician that was required I wasn't doing. I didn't want to. So yeah, that's a big a big realization. But I guess America is representative to me of that failure of thinking of like a failure of understanding the um the steps that are required for to to achieve a goal yeah 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 and in this case yours was music but yeah it could have been anything because yeah yeah what you wanted and what you were working towards daylight because for the most part the thing you wanted you weren't really working towards no in, in a capacity that could be recognized no it was exactly it's just all in my head i mean the amount of my musical career that took place in my head is, is so i think of all things that has been the hardest thing to realize it's just like the time the amount of time that i wait that I, I don't want to say it's wasted because i've learned so, so much yeah. but the amount of time that i spent not doing the work just f infuriates me but 
Uh, especially because Josiah, like he's 21 and he's in my band and he's a person who's, you know, their band is doing the work. And it's crazy to me when I look at him and just think I'm like 33, like I'm, I'm 12 years older and I'm just now learning to do the part that they're doing, you know? And yeah, it's just, it's really, um, stark. No, I suppose that's very true. I there's a good justice for someone to be grateful for. Then all in good time. Listen, listen to it uh-huh. on repeat. Uh-huh. Listen to it on repeat when you're feeling down. Because that that whole thing was just yeah. John was just like, why do I not have stuff that I want? And the therapist yep. is like, all in good time, John. Like, mm. and those, I connected with that song when he played it. Yeah, yeah. That's I, that is it is exactly what you mm-hmm. um, were missing at that time. The story behind that is exactly what you were missing. You were missing someone to say either all in good time or in this case, you know. It's, it's going to take a bit of work, but mm. but the idea of all in good time for you just having this end goal of success in that blanket term. I don't like the term success and happy. Yeah, happy is is fleeting. Success yeah. is whatever's the shiniest arbitrary. thing at the time. Yeah. It's an arbitrary thing. So having that having that notion of all in good time, whatever it is that you're working towards, whatever it is that is your real visceral goal, all in good time. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, so what, what's, what's Cal and I got on for the next little while? Like what, what's going on for you guys? Like, I know there's lots of things happening. You're releasing the single and, and stuff like that. Tell me, tell me what's, what's going on with Cal so, and I. Well, that album that I sat on for this, like, so this whole time that album has been like a pebble in my shoe. It's just been there and I've gone, well, you know, it's very Americana and folky and it's not really an accurate reflection of the music that I'm making now, but it's beautiful and it's ma- it's a world class it's made in a world class studio it's with amazing product. players yeah. yeah and i'm just like and it's i'm proud of it man i'm so proud like that that thing was one of the coolest things i ever got involved in like we made it in two and a half weeks and it is just this time capsule for me like it's so beautiful and i realize that no one's heard it and even if only a hundred people listen to it and really love it that's worth it releasing it for so we're gonna release it and the fact that what's on the album is very different to what we'll play live well that's fine like there's nothing wrong with that Mm -hmm. and we are playing it the way that i wish i had had i wish that i had had the i wish that i'd had a band at the time who we could have walked into that studio with an idea of what we were doing but i didn't and i listened to what he told me to do and it's a different season exactly 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 so we're going to release um, a waterfall release it. So just start dropping singles um, starting from July. Um, and yeah, I think the album's called All My Friends End Up Strangers. and Or it's called Maybe an Island Will Do. I'm not sure. You're not sure yet. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. Very soon there is a, going to be a growing list as it is now to, to people that do want to spend that money, do want to spend their hard earned to go and see you do your thing and see you and Josiah and Dylan do your thing because it's, um, it's worthwhile. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. So really. where can the lovely people find you um, on well, music-wise and social-wise? Yeah. Well, Cal and Mai are C-A-L-A-N space M-A-I on Spotify and then I am Cal and Mai on um, Instagram. I've Which tra- is a lie because he's not. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, It is a lie, he's not. I've been toying with changing it to we are Cal and Mai, but I've just noticed it doesn't look quite as good because I am and then Mai, like M-A-I, I-A-M, but on also, each side looks nice. It would look like where, yeah. W-A-A-R. Not w- we are. It would look like where E Callan Mike. Exactly. So th- exactly. Th- th- those sorts of things. When I look at that sort of stuff, when I look see people's things, and a lot of people, I was like, "Oh, your name was like Dilbert." And they're like, "No, my name is Dill." Exactly. Exactly. Bitry. I was like, exactly. "Oh, I thought it was Dilbert R Y." And I didn't yep. know what the R Y was for. He's like, "No, you've just been reading it wrong because it's just all in a line. You just exactly. read it wrong." Exactly. Someone thought my name was Ian Calamari. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Ian Calamari. It's been fantastic. Um, see, when I, when I sent the form saying, what do you want to be called on the pod, mate? You should have led with oh, Ian. That's right. So, um, Ian, it's been great, to, <laughs> been great to have you on. But no, seriously, thank you so much for being here and thanks for wanting to have a chat with me. Um, I hope this can uh, hopefully um, instill some more positivity in, in your music career and the growth definitely, that you, you three are having. Um, because yeah, that's the music industry not meets more people like you. So, um, thank you so much for being here. Ditto brother. Thank you. Well guys, 
that is another episode of the Ask Music podcast. Lovely to have Jordy, Ian, Cal, and my all three of them um, here to to chat with me. And uh, you know what to find these guys. You know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. Uh, make sure you check out all the Cal and my stuff coming up. Um, release show at the precinct, July twenty six. And as always, guys. Until next time, I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs>